Are you experiencing stress, anxiety, or unhappiness? Do you feel weighed down by the past? Stay tuned for a special message from Roland Trujillo, host of the Shedding Shackles radio program. For over 25 years, Roland Trujillo has been helping people shed the shackles of unhappy memories, consisting of upset, hurt feelings, and negative emotions that bind them to the past. Over the years, many people have listened to and benefited from Roland's positive message. Perhaps you too can discover the secret to becoming free from the past and moving forward to live a new life of joy and purpose. And now, here's your Shedding Shackles host, Roland Trujillo. Hello everyone, welcome. This is Roland. Welcome to uh, Shedding Shackles. That's my new name for my, uh, what I do. Shedding Shackles. Letting go of what binds you to the past. Letting go of negative emotions, unhappiness, bitterness, unfinished business, mem bad memories. Okay, letting them go, starting anew. They bind you to the past, and so do the symptoms associated with those unhappy memories. You see, human beings are creatures of love. We were created in the image and likeness of God. God is truth and God is love. And we humans are supposed to be creatures of love and truth okay well when you see a little tiny child they have a lot of love admittedly it's child the child's love and later we are to have a more mature love eventually an agape love an emotionless love but nevertheless they do have a, a type of love a lot of love but then what happens to people well what happens is that people become resentful angry resentful and angry and resentment and anger then lead to a whole bunch of other emotions such as um, unhappiness jealousy and so on bitterness well the answer then is part of the answer to letting go of all of those negative things from the past now these negative things from the past remember what I said resentment based anger based and so you end up seeing the manifestation in other words that sin the sin of resentment the sin of judgment the sin of anger is passed down to the body see the body has to comply with whatever the soul is doing so if the soul is angry resentful hateful bitter full of rage judgment see it affects the body and so you end up having symptoms associated with those negative emotions and negative uh, mindset, okay? So in a nutshell, people become really messed up inside. Now you can't always tell when you look at people on the outside, sometimes they look oh so nice and and, and everything looks fine and they look like they have their act really together and everything. But if you knew what was going on inside, see, it's nothing like what the false appearance that they, they put up, up for you. So now let's talk about uh, trauma, because that's what, that's what hatred is. See, in the past, there was confusion and injustice and cruelty and meanness and tease, which was unfortunate, okay? And it's unfortunate that some of the meanness or a lot of it or the cruelty or the neglect or the failure to to do you right in some way a lot of that was on account of parents foolish parents unaware parents see parents who themselves had been robbed when they were children it was robbed for their their joy their innocence it was taken from them and what happened? In exchange, they got what? Pride. See, there's an exchange that goes on. In exchange for innocence, in exchange for love, in exchange for what they could have been. See, see, they could have grown to be a Madame Curie, uh, 
a Sojourner Truth, a Susan B. Anthony, a George Washington, an Albert Einstein, a David, a Moses, a Paul, see, a Ruth. But no, they lost the ground from which they could have flourished to be what they could have been, a genius, a, a noble person. Instead, they became a compensated person, compensated with pride, emotions, stuff, knowledge. See? So you see that exchange? And in exchange for innocence and humility, which, by which they would, would have kept them close to truth and love and from which they could have flowered, instead they became compensated nothings. Okay, compensated nothings. And those compensated nothings became our parents and our teachers and our coaches. See? And then they did to you what was done to them. So don't resent them. It's very important. Don't resent your parents, your teachers, your coaches, your aunt, your uncle, your author authorities. See? When you found out that they, that they were small-minded, that they had feet of clay, or when your father wasn't there for you, for example, don't resent them. Okay? It was taken from them when they were little. They, they didn't have love to give because they, they didn't have love, so they couldn't give love. But don't let it happen to you, although it has already to some extent, a greater or lesser extent. You, you took up what they were in exchange for what you were. You gave them your life. See, they were temptation, actually. That's what they were. That, the, what was wrong in them became a temptation. And it tempted you to become upset and angry and so on and so forth, or to serve that wrong in them. See, in a parent or whoever, or a coach, you served, the, you served that wrong. See, because they took what you were away from you and, and stamped you with their image. And then that, that of them in you then served them so they could, you could become, that in you could become a greater it, just like them. Because that was all you had left. That was the only way you could grow, to be like them. Because what you could have been was taken from you. And your life was taken. See, your life force. And in the exchange, you may have even taken on their ill, their sickness, their illness. See, an exchange process is always going on in, when there's temptation. You lose your innocence, you lose your life force, you lose your identity. And in, in exchange, you get illusion of being good for the illusion and, and assurance for serving them. See, they reward you and tell you that you're good for complying and for serving them, see? And you get their image to become like them. So that's what happened. So now I want to read something to you. I want to read to you um, something from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 8, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. It says, when evening came, we're talking now about Jesus. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, brought to Jesus. And he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. Okay, that was written in Isaiah chapter 58. Verse 4, I think. So, Matthew is saying that what Jesus did, healing the sick, driving out what was wrong, what, the wrong, the spirit of wrong that had entered those people, and, and sickness, healing the sick, fulfills what was predicted, prophesied by Isaiah, who said, He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. Okay. Now I want to read something else to you. This is from 1 John 3, 5. And 1 John 3, 5 says, 
And you know that Jesus came so that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sin. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him there is no sin. Okay? So I'd like for you to keep those things in mind. Jesus bore our sins. But you know something? Jesus can take away sins today. He can bear. See, remember I said there's an exchange process that, occur, that occurs when you respond to the wrong in someone and then you lose, your, you lose life and your identity and instead you get something of them and there and even there's and the sin it's see and the sickness it's like a transfer you see that happen between like uh, parents parent and child for example parent the overshadowing the smothering parent takes the life of the child and the child gives life to the parent and takes and in exchange for serving the parent gets a, approval and the identity of the, of the parent or the wrong identity inside the parent. But something entirely different happens with Christ, but it's not temptation. What happens is that he takes your sin upon himself and in him there is no sin. Your sin dissolves in his light. In his goodness, it dissolves. He takes it. And in exchange, you get from him. You get something of him. Okay? And something of his light. And something of his, uh, as he comes to be with us. You see? Now, this is what happens when salvation occurs. Now, what implements salvation is a, the, a, a person who has a change of heart about their way of life. See, but most of us are full of a lot of anger toward people who failed us, especially our parents, especially our father and others, and resentment toward them and judgment. And then, and then resentment and judgment toward people all around us who remind you of your, parent, of your father who failed you or your mother who was a nag or a teacher who was a bully or someone in class. You see what I mean? So all around you, you see people like those archetypal people from your past, and you resent them and judge them. See, someone like your dad, someone like your mom, someone like your teacher. There they are. You see them, and you resent them. They may not be like, they may really not be like your dad, but they may look like your dad or have the same kind of voice or have the same hair color or hairstyle as your mom, okay? And then to, to you to your fallen self, it's them, and then you resent them, you judge them, see, judge their wrong, and soon you become addicted to judging everyone. But when you begin to have a change of heart about that, and you're willing to give up your resentments and, and your judgments, you're willing to give them up, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you're sick and tired of hating everyone, being full of anger and full of resentment, you just want to let it go, okay? You, bet you have a change of heart. And then, see, so now all, all your life, see, for years, you've been fighting off God's light, which to you felt like conscience. It made you feel bad because it was there to show you that you're, that you're messing up, especially by your resentments and your judgments. See, so you're guilty of what? A lot of hate, a lot of judgment. Maybe even today you're judging your husband who reminds you of your father who you hated. You see what I mean? So you're guilty for that. And you're also guilty for hiding it and covering it up from the light. See, you didn't want it to be you didn't want it to be exposed. You didn't want you didn't want it to come out in the light and be seen. You didn't want to see your own wrong. You didn't want to admit your wrong. So you're guilty for not wanting to admit your wrong. And for avoiding the light. See? So that's your folly. Your folly is rejecting the light of, from God. 
the, the light of intuition, the light which feels like conscience, of, of rejecting it. See, in order that you could go on feeling right and you're wrong. So you could go on being wrong and not have to admit and say you're sorry, quietly, in your heart, see. But when you have a change of heart and you're willing to admit you're wrong, then his light begins to penetrate. Okay? And then you see your wrongs and you grieve and mourn what you see about yourself. You hated your dad, you hated your mom, you hated your brother. See, you betrayed your wife, you betrayed your husband. You See, things like that. You were impatient with your kids. Things like that. See? Not to mention that you probably took drugs and who knows what else you did in order to deny conscience. See, people drink to deny, they work to deny. They eat to deny and they party to deny. They do everything to deny the truth of what? They're wrong in the light. So now when you're open to receive the light, while well, the light comes, it, God enters your life. And then you begin to wake up and to see the way things really are. And you see yourself as you are. And it's painful at first. It's painful. See? So there you are. Now you see you're wrong and you're sorry. And then you also see that God forgives you. But you still have the sin, see, that had that entered and made a home in you. Remember Paul said that sin makes, made a home in him. Sin makes a home in you. So you have that, not to mention all these symptoms and sequelae um, that fo follow from that root of sin. See? So you still have that. But now something else you have to see, that you've always tried to save yourself. So you always tried to save yourself. You thought by pulling up yourself up by your bootstraps, by trying to trying to be nice, trying to be better, trying to be good. You tried to save yourself. Or you tried to save yourself by denying your wrong and trying to make yourself look right. See? And d denying conscience. Okay? But now you see that you're wrong and you can't make yourself right. You see this in God's light. Which is part of your new attitude, which permits his light to enter. So now you see that you can't change yourself. You don't want to be the way you are, but there's nothing you can do about it. So now you just quite, you see the way you are, and you regret the way you are. So it's a humble, helpless feeling. Humble and helpless, but the light is there. And now, lo and behold, the mystery. Christ takes your sin upon himself, and you're free. You're free. My name is Roland. You have been listening to Shedding Shackles with your host, Roland Trujillo. Now you can listen to Roland anytime by logging on to www.sheddingshackles.com. You'll find lots of free, helpful information, and you can also order materials or make a donation by using your credit card. Once again, the web address is SheddingShackles.com. Please remember that Shedding Shackles is listener-supported. Thank you.